in South Africa's Prince of Platinum. Well, actually he's a king. The traditional leader of Africa's richest tribe, the Bafo King. Africa is full of kings and chiefs, but not many like Kosi Leboni II, because he holds the keys to one of South Africa's most valuable natural resources, one of the biggest platinum deposits in the world. And that's turned his tribe into a business. Big business. It's become more of a Bafo King Inc. Yeah. Because uh, you know we are dealing with a lot of money here, you are dealing with a lot of uh, big administration to administer the money, and we are dealing with a big population and which is growing on a daily basis. So you have to have a formalized way of managing all this whole th this logistics. The king enjoys the trappings of a royal lifestyle. Stop, baby! Educated in America, he's as comfortable on a golf course with the captains of industry as with the village chiefs. <coughs> or then again, maybe not. One more time. and an achiever in the world of big business. The perfect role model for post-apartheid South Africa. He sits at the top tables in the country, rubbing shoulders with the president. But it's a global burden of royalty that private lives are public property. And the king of the Baffle King is no exception. 35 years old, $2 billion in assets, that spells eligible. As a traditional African king, the Corsi is under pressure. He even has the president scouting for a wife. His mother is not his wife. <laughs> I say this because I know that he is very, very actively looking for a wife. So in the event that there's anybody who's interested, please don't be discouraged by what Alice said, that the Queen Mother was his wife. The Queen Mother is his mother. Obviously, there are some elders who always call me and say, you know the deal, you have to do something, man. Tell us your plan. <laughs> it's very important that they actually we want the, 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 the progeny from him, so that uh, we should have uh, another king coming from him. If he can't marry, who, who, if he, he happens to die, who is going to be the heir to the throne? Is there a lot of competition? Yeah, there's a competition, but we, uh, as the elderly people, here, we, are, uh, we are there to stop the people to come in to his what you call, to his house. The, 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 this uh, uh, girls and so, we stop them not to go to the... Is he a bit of a fox? Yes. The king. <laughs> <laughs> But for now, the king's plans are more monetary than marital. For every ounce of platinum that's dug from the lands the Corsi rules over, the tribe gets a piece of the action. Last year, it amounted to $10 million. The Baffle King are an extraordinary exception to the rule in South Africa, where money and power still resides almost exclusively with whites. How they came to defy history is the result of an incredible twist of fate more than a century ago. This is the farm that was once owned by Paul Kruger, the first president of the Boer Republic, a neighbour and, believe it or not, a good friend of the Baffle King. Their lands now stretch all the way out to the horizon. 
It's one of the great ironies of South Africa that this icon of Africana nationalism was in fact the man who advised the Bafokeng to buy the land and all of its mineral wealth. The doer and religious Africana leader felt he owed a debt to the Bafokeng chief, who had ordered his warriors into battle alongside the white farmers to help win the war against the Zulu. The Baffle King funded the first land purchases by selling their cattle and sending young men to work on the diamond mines in Kimberley, hundreds of kilometres away. Paul Kruger's advice may have given the Baffle King the key to great riches, but the apartheid system that grew out of his Africana nationalism would ensure they'd not see its benefits for nearly a century. When white-run mining companies started digging up the platinum, the Baffle King would be forced to accept the financial scraps thrown from the table. By the late 1980s, South Africa's political landscape was changing, and as apartheid melted away, came the Baffle King's chance to claim through the courts what they'd always been denied. It would become one of South Africa's most ferocious legal battles. When the case was finally settled, the company gave the Baffle King the keys to the corporate boardroom, where the King is now greeted as an equal among South Africa's titans of mining. How are you? Okay, thanks. The Baffle King's reward, a seat on the board, $25 million worth of free shares, and a hefty increase in royalties. A couple of chairs for you to choose from over there. Oh, well, I'll choose this. <laughs> Well, considering that the last year the turnover was four billion, so we talk about uh, one percent of that would be forty million rents. And in some years we got zero, in some years we'd get as, as little as six million rents. Now, if you look at forty million, it's a significant uh, change of heart. Literally, the king of all he surveys. He took me for a spin in a helicopter are, uh, to get an overview of the most valuable 70,000 hectares in South Africa. And uh, we want to have uh, our infrastructure developed. So but the king is eager to portray uh, a down to earth image. Get, have a After all, Africa has a sordid reputation for theft to and corruption. But under his guidance, uh, yeah, the Baffle uh, King have put their money to good use. But uh, we want to do better because we know we can do better. If you look at Baffle King geographic area, we've built all the roads that you see that are tarred. The schools that you see are all built by us. The water reticulation, the electricity, everything that you see here without government subsidy. So that's how we're going to continue doing it but we're going to manage it more in a professional way. While there's plenty of money to go around, not all of it is spent on roads, schools and water. This is the $25 million Bafokeng Sports right. Palace. It is quite impressive. And I think they've done quite a fine job. The King wants it to be a venue for World Cup soccer if South Africa's bid to host the event is successful. But its 45,000 seat capacity is more than double the population of the Bafokeng capital, Pokeng. And that's an extravagant way to put your name on the map. But while the Baffle King have been able to claim what's rightfully theirs, they also intend to keep it that way. In the Baffle King capital, charity begins at home. Locals get the best, and outsiders get the rest. Ishmael Makutle has been coming to wait outside the mine offices every day for months. 
but so far he hasn't landed a single day's work. Why? He's not a Bafokeng. Most of the time they used to give first preference to the Bafokeng people. Bafokeng is the people who are living in this area. So we, the people who are coming from outside, they used to give us work after they have employed those people of Bafokeng. If they don't come here, there's no way and there's no way where they can go to, to, to find a job. So they are just hoping that maybe they are going to be employed next time. They don't know when. So they are very much frustrated, but they are hoping, just like myself. But Ishmael's fate is unlikely to furrow the brow of the Baffle King. The platinum mines are a magnet, attracting thousands of desperate job seekers to the area. The Baffle King territory is bleak. The brutish infrastructure of mining punctuates the horizon in every direction. The first shift starts before dawn. By 6 a.m., nearly 10,000 workers will have made the journey a kilometre into the earth. Then it's on to an underground chairlift that continues the journey to the precious ore face. This is the life of a South African platinum miner. Ten hours a day, a kilometre below ground. Crouched in a tiny grotto so small you can't stand up. Heat, danger and back-breaking labour all for around $700 a month. The platinum reserves down here will last 100 years at least. And for all the money that's going to bring the back in time, you won't find too many of them toiling away down here in the damp, humid atmosphere of the mines. They're up the top, doing all the good jobs. Grant Magano is a 25-year-old engineer who's reaping all the benefits of being a Baffle King. Put through university at mining company expense, he admits that his people find the underground slog, well, unpalatable. Well, that was the perception. That's the reason why we don't have, uh, we don't have them working underground. They have this belief that underground is not meant for somebody who is of the community of the Baffle King. We own the land, we should get people from outside to come and do the rough work for us. And we should sit here on the surface and do all these uh, soft jobs that will, that will not uh, stuff us that much. Basically, how does it operate? If you can just the king's uh, message to men like Grant, one day uh, all of this will be yours. The Baffle King uh, hope to open their own mine one day, on and you can bet that Grant won't be at the rock face. Left indicators inside, okay. and it shows you exactly where your combines is. It's a pity that we cannot all be in the same position. It's a pity. There shall always be people who will be below others. There shall always be people who will be given the role to lead others. And that, unfortunately, we, we, we cannot turn around. And as for the king, he makes no apologies for this somewhat elitist view. Well, we are South Africans at the end of the day, and we are proud of that. But we must also preserve our heritage and we must be proud of it. Because being South African doesn't mean rejecting your roots. And that's why we should uh, put ourselves first as Bafuke and South Africans uh, second. The discovery of platinum under the Bafuke land has allowed the King's tribe to defy a history that has condemned millions of Africans to a life that's lived from one meal to the next. The African continent has an ignoble history of having its riches plundered with no thought or benefit for the traditional owners. The Platinum King is putting an end to all that, but you've got to be a Baffle King to get a slice of the action.